Sorry, viewers. I forgot to start the broadcast, but now we've started. Okay, so one way to do this is to do students.columnscore.max. So .max happens to be a method on an array that you can call. The other way to do this is to call a, call a function max on students.columnscore. So students.columnscore will grab the array containing all the scores, and then I can use the max method or the max function to grab the maximum score. Any questions about that? Very well. Let's talk about sorting. Okay. So now we're going to be talking about a different way to view tables, which is um, considering tables as an ordered collection of rows. Okay. So, so we discussed how tables can be considered as multiple columns. Well, another way to slice a table is to slice it by rows. Okay. So we have a bunch of rows in a table. And what we can do is use a sort method to create a new table with the same rows in a different order. So it's pretty handy. And I'm really also using the show method in my demos. The show method will just allow me to display the first couple of rows of a table. Um, it'll be convenient when, it, when our tables get too long. So let's go to a demo. Demo here. We're going to be looking at the salaries of NBA players. So if I run that, table is not defined. But it did not run from data science, import star. So run that, run that. OK, so here we go. We have this long table containing the salaries of all the players in the NBA from 2015 to 2016. You can see here that we display like the first 10 players or so, and then we have 407 rows omitted. That means that there is a total of 417 rows in this table. I can also find that out by doing nba.numrows as usual. Numbers, 417. Cool. All right. So I can use the nba.show method, because the table is pretty long, to just grab the first three rows. And that's what I'm going to be doing so that we don't have to stare at this really long table for the rest of this lecture. All right. So let's suppose that I want to find out um, how much money was paid to all players in the NBA. So first of all, let's look at our data. So our data here, this column contains the player name, the position that the player played. So this is a power forward, center, point guard, shooting guard, and a small forward, I believe. The team that they played on, and the salary in millions of dollars. Oh my gosh. I should have been in the NBA. OK, so let's suppose I want to find out how, many, how much money was paid to all players. So I can take the sum of NBA.column. And I want to grab the column number 0, 1, 2, 3, column number 3. Okay? So a total of $2,000 million was paid, which is about $2 billion, which is a lot of dollars. All right? So lots of dollars being paid to these basketball players. That's how much money was paid in the NBA. Suppose that I want to find the player who is paid the most. Okay? So first, what I can try, as we've discussed before, is do the max of nba.column3. There's one player there, one lucky player, who made $25 million in 2015 to 2016. How do you think I will get that player? Talk it over with your neighbor. Yeah, question? Right. So Jared, I'll, I'll answer your question after we finish discussing. Yeah. All right. Any guesses? Any guesses? You guys look puzzled. You guys should be puzzled because I haven't shown you how to do this. 
I just want you to take a guess. Yeah, Alan? Maybe you can use a loop. Use a loop. So you have to go through all the players. So you're saying figure out some way of going through all the players and find a player that made $25 million. Yeah, that's, a, that's one way to do it. We haven't learned loops in this class. We won't get there until next week, I believe. But when we do, go, when we do learn about loops, you can, you can try that. Yeah, Kevin? Yeah, so so Kevin says I can just sort sort all the players by salary from lowest to highest and grab the last item. That's a great way to do it. In fact, we're going to be doing that. Um, maybe you looked at so we're talking about sorting. So nice guess. We're going to start the table. Um, so Jared asked a question, which was if I take the sum of NBA dot column, this is the sum of four hundred seventeen salaries. Is that is that your question? You're right, right. So when I display the table. The table only displays the first couple of rows, typically. But when I grab the actual column, so if I were to take NBA.column, I actually get back 417 salaries. I get salaries of everyone in the table, not just the first 10 or the first three. Okay, so here is the actual sum of money paid to the total salary paid to all players in the NBA. That's the sum of the NBA.column three. So to start the table, Let's say I want to find out which lucky player made $25 million. I can sort by the player column. And I want to reduce the output to only five rows. So let's show that. But if I sort by the player column, I sort by the name, like in alphabetical order. Okay? So if I want to actually find out the salary and sort by a salary, I'll want to sort by the 15 to 16 salary. One way of doing that is by making sure I have double quotes here because this label has single quotes. Okay, so notice I use double quotes because there's apostrophes here and single quotes. So when I paste, this will be this Python will be fine with that. I can do that. And when I do that, you'll also find that the salaries go from low to highest. Okay, so, so as Kevin suggested, I can take the last salary in this list, or what I can do is I can sort in descending order instead of ascending order. So by default, by, by default table sort will go from lowest to highest. I can make it go from highest to lowest if I want. And the way I do that is I add an argument called descending. Descending, I can't spell, equals true. And now I found that Kobe Bryant was a player that made $25 million before he retired. Now he'll have a nice retirement. Okay? So one way of not having to type out this 15 to 16 salary weird looking thing over and over again is to store this label into a variable called salary. And now what I can do is I can do the same thing, but replace wherever I see this label with the variable salary. Now it's clear which column I'm using. Um, and I don't have to type in that long thing over and over again. So here's the same thing. I want to also point out that there's a special looking argument here. This is what Python, what we call in Python a named argument. Okay? So I actually don't really need this argument here. I can just get rid of it like that, and that'll work just fine. It turns out that when I use these things called Boolean variables, which are trues and falses, it's more clear um, to say what this true and false is doing. So here I'm saying sort in descending order. So descending equals true means sort in descending order. And that way it's more clear to, to me what that is doing. If I ever forget or want to look at how it works, I can always do mba.sort question mark, as, as I've shown you before. Here we go. So mba.sort, here's a column or label. So if you match that against what I've done before, so here is like the label of the column. And here are two um, optional arguments. Okay? So when I see an argument that looks like this, this tells me that the default value of the descending argument is false, and the default value of the distinct argument is also false. If I want to set either of those to true, I have to pass it in like this, or just pass in true like that. Okay? So those two things do the same thing. Typically, we'll just include the name so that it's more doing, because otherwise I can have like true, false, true, 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 and you have no idea what each true and false does. So this way, I'm clear what, is, what each argument is doing. Any questions about that? It's strange that you have no questions. Maybe you'll get more later. Let's move on then. Okay. 
So Kobe Bryant, $25 million, lots of dollars. If I want to figure out which center made the most dollars, I can sort twice. Okay, so if I sort by the salary and then sort by the position, so I'm just going to use the index here, sort by the position column, so that's position. What you see here is that I get all the centers and then all the, I believe it will be all the point guards or all the power forwards and then all the point guards. See, when I sort by the position column, all the positions get sorted in my final table. But because I sorted by the salary first, within each position, I get, I get each position sorted by their salaries. Okay, so I sort by position last, so the actual sorting is by position, but, but within each position, I'm sorted by his salaries. Okay, so here I found out that Dwight Howard was the highest paid center, and then Marc Gasol, and then the rest of these people, which you may or may not know. Okay, any questions about that? Yeah, Kevin? Yeah, yeah. So how does that how does that actually work? So let's walk through it step by step. So the first step is to sort by salary. Okay. So I have this table back here where I've sorted by salary, and all the so I have it sorted by salary, but all the positions are kind of mixed up in there, just depending on who made the most in what order. Okay. So I have everyone sorted by salary, and when I sort by the position afterward, what happens is the positions the position column is now sorted. But because the whole table was sorted by salary before that, I get all the centers and then all the, all the power forwards and then all the point guards, so PF and then PG, so sorted by alphabetical order. But within each group of centers, because I sorted by salary before, each of those groups is sorted by the salary. Okay, so, so it's a little bit confusing, but I suggest you try it out. So try, try sorting by one and then the other, or sort by, you know, like do a couple of sorts and flip them and see what you get. And hopefully, if you try it out and practice with it, you'll get better at understanding how the sorting works. But the thing to remember here is whatever you sort with last is what the table will actually be sorted in like at the final, at the final place. Okay? So if I had switched the order here and sorted by salary last, I would have gotten all the salaries in descending order because I sorted by a salary last. Emily. Uh, if you did descending equals false, yeah, great question. Why don't we try it out? So Emily asks, what happens if I would I did descending equals false? I get all the centers, but in ascending order. So here, poor Ryan Holland only made one hundred thousand dollars in twenty fifteen. Good question. So that's any equals true. Back up to Dwight Howard. All right. So I mentioned before, so you, we saw before that the sorts method takes in, also takes in a distinct argument. So if I take a look at the sort method, I get back the distinct argument. Let me show you how that works. So if I do mba.sort by um, position, and I do distinct, equals true, what Python will do is take each, take sort by position, so this is in alphabetical order of position, but only take the first results of each position. Okay, so here you can see I only have five rows in this table because there are five positions in basketball, and I've taken the first row that appears in my original table for each position. Okay, now if I had wanted to grab, so this allows me to grab highest paid players of each position because I can sort by the salary first. So I can first sort by salary and then sort by position and add distinct equals true. And so instead of getting all the centers here, I'm only going to take off the first center, Dwight Howard. And then when I get to point power forward, I'm going to take off the first power forward there. And that'll be whoever is making the most money of each position. So you can see here, Dwight Howard making a lot, Chris Bosh making a lot, Chris Paul, and then Kobe Bryant, and then Dwayne Wade from the Miami Heat. Okay? So this thing equals true. Again, if I forget how that works, I can always do sort question mark and take a look. 
So the important thing to remember here is that you, should, you shouldn't worry too much about the exact syntax or how, what the arguments can do. What you should keep track of is what you can do and why it's useful. Okay, so why do I want to sort? Well, when I sort, I can figure out who makes the most money or who makes the least money. All right? And the reason why you should do that is because you can always look up or reference um, how the methods work and what the methods do. But for you, you won't be able to look up how do I find the maximum value of this? You know, how do I find the player that makes the most salary? That question will change from table to, pay, from table, to table depending on what data you're looking at. But knowing what you can do will allow, will allow you to look up what you need to on the spot as you, as you work through this. Okay? So yes, Elian. Um, is there a method that can select a specific row? Is there a method that can select a specific row? Well, perfect. I'm just about to talk about it. <laughs> yes, but there is. So actually, in this class, you'll always have access to what we call a documentation. Okay? So mba.story question mark, you'll always have access to that. On your exams, you'll, we'll also give you a sheet containing all the table methods with how to use them. Okay? So, so don't worry about memorizing all the methods. Remember what they do and why they're useful. So here's a, discuss, here's a discussion question. Let's say I ran the following line. Let me just make this the same format as we've done before. So let me do that. And then I take the column player. And I sort by first column, and I pass true. So I sort by player, and do descending equals true. So now my line's getting pretty long. When my lines get too long, one handy way of making the lines more readable is first I want to take everything and put it in one set of parentheses. So what I did there is parentheses at the beginning, parentheses at the end. And now when I have the parentheses, I can just put new lines basically wherever I want. So I can do that. And Python will read that as one long expression instead of looking at the different lines and wondering what I'm trying to do. So parentheses allow you to break up long lines. So when I run this, what do you think will happen? What will I get out, or will I get an error? Think about it to yourself for a minute, and then I'll have you discuss with your neighbor. All right, go ahead and talk about it with your neighbor. All right. Well, the best way to find out is just to try it. When I run this, I get a type error. I read my error message, and it says an integer is required dot type string. That is really not that helpful for me. So I have to go back to my code and figure out and run through it in my head to see what I did wrong. Okay. So it says this code does not work, and let's figure out why. So first, I do MBA dot sort by salary descending equals true. We know that that works. What it'll do it is, is it'll sort the table and put it in descending order from, sal from, least to greatest, from greatest to least sorry, salary. Okay, so Kobe Bryant and then whoever is after him. A column player will grab out the column player. So it'll, this will return an array 
containing the, all the player names, because that's how dot .column works. Because this is an array, when I call dot .sort on it, things will go wrong. Okay? So it turns out that arrays also have a dot .sort method, but it doesn't work like the table dot .sort method. So this returns back a very cryptic error. But it's because that this is not the right type of thing. Okay? So, so again, when you're working with stuff, when you're working with tables and arrays, you really have to keep track of which type of thing is being returned by each method. Here I got messed up because a column method returns, a, returns an array, which is a different type of thing. Arrays don't really have the same sorting method that tables do. Okay? On the other hand, if I had done select player, this would actually be totally fine because dot select returns a new table. Okay, so if I do dot select player, I get a single column table with the players in reverse alphabetical order because I passed in descending equals true here. All right. Okay. Let's move on to lists. So as we covered before, arrays need to contain the same type of thing. Okay, so if an array contains uh, Ints, all the elements in the array need to be integers. If it contains strings, all the elements in the array need to be strings. Now lists, on the other hand, don't need to have all the same thing. They can have anything you want in them. So it's a sequence of values, but it doesn't require that each value contain the same type of thing. So for example, here I have an integer 5, I have the string 4, and if I want, and because I'm crazy, I put a table here in the list. List can, list can contain anything. Okay. Now, we won't, talk, we won't use lists a whole lot in this class, but I'm going to show you why they're useful for a specific reason. Okay, let's say I try to make an array with 2 and 3.0. So what happens is if I, make, if I give it an int and a float, it'll automatically convert both of them to floats. So now they have all the same type. Let's say I want to take, let's say I want to do 2 comma and a string 3. So because it forces, because arrays force all their elements to have the same type, it will convert strings. And now we have the string two and the string three. Okay? So arrays don't allow, don't allow you having different, different types of things. To make a list, on the other hand, you do brackets and then you list out the elements in that list. Okay? So I can do two comma three. And then Python is totally OK with having different types of stuff in a Python list. If I look at the type of this thing, let's just make sure now we have a list. Okay, so a list. The reason why lists are useful, and really the only reason that we'll use them in this class for the most part, is because if I'm trying, let's suppose I'm trying to take my MBA table, and I want to add a new row to it. A new row has to contain different types of stuff, or often will have to contain different types of things. If I want to add a new row to this table, I need a string, a string, a string, and then a float. Okay? So I need different types of stuff here. So to do that, I need to make a new row. So I'm going to add myself to the NBA. Um, I play the point guard position, and I play for the Berkeley data scientists. And I make zero dollars because no one will ever pay me to play basketball. And to add a row to the table, I can use a method with row. And I plug in my row here. And when I run that, I get stuck at the very bottom of this table. So what I want to do is show how much money I make. So I'm going to sort by the salary. And there I am. I now am in the MBA. OK? It's pretty much the only reason why we'll use lists, but it's useful to know. Cool. Now let me answer Ilian's question and talk about how to get back rows from the table. Oh, so before that, um, this is just showing you that this is the first element, the second element, the third element, which is a single table. And then just because I'm crazy, um, here's a when you actually so when you actually pass if you accidentally pass in a list into a table instead of make array. So normally you use make array three comma four here. If you accidentally pass in a list here, a table will automatically convert the list into an array and then put it into the table. So if you want to save time, you can also use a list here. Um, but typically, you'll just use array. You'll just use tables from the internet. So it's too often. Okay. So let's talk about taking rows from the table. So we use select to grab 
called from the table, but we used a method take to, to take out rows. Okay? So the way it works is the rows are numbered starting at zero, just like how columns are numbered starting at zero. And what we can do is taking out, we can, just, we can take out a single row from the table or take out multiple. Okay? So let me show you how that works. I have here the MBA table again. For your viewing pleasure, let me just show the first couple of rows. If I do dot take zero, it will take out row number zero, which happens to be the first thing there. It will return to me a new table containing only the row that I have taken out. Okay? So if I want to take out multiple rows, I can take rows one. So I have to pass it an array and say, I want to take rows one, two, or three. Oh, sorry, zero, one, and two. And when I run that, I now get a table with only three rows. So there's no like 414 rows omitted like there was in the previous case. There's only three rows in this table. So I can grab out, I can grab out the first couple of rows of that table that way. Okay. Any questions about that? All right. So what I can do now is use that take method. I can sort by a salary. Descending equals true. And I can take out the first couple of rows of that, 0, 1, 2. And I get back the, the three players that make the most money in the, in the NBA, Kobe Bryant, Johnson, LeBron James. OK? Now, I can also do, so if you remember from when we talked about ranges, to make an array containing 0, 1, and 2, I can also do np.a range 3. And this will give me an array with 0, 1, and 2. I guess I need to import MP. Do that. Now I can run that, and uh, this is this is the same thing as I did before. Okay, so convenient there. Um, here you'll notice a convenient thing about how the A range method works, where if I pass in three to image, this will create an array containing zero, one, and two, which is a little bit um, unintuitive, but if, when we use it in the context of taking out rows, it's actually very convenient because the argument here says is you can kind of read it as take out the first three rows of the table, and it will create the array that takes out the first three rows of the table. OK? All right. So what I can do with this table, I can save it into a variable called rich. These players are very, oh, sorry, rich. These players are very rich. And now I can start this table by, let's say, the team that they play on. And now I have the rich people sorted by the team. So I can still, so this, since this is a table, I can still call all my table methods on that. OK? Cool. So, as, so again, MBA, let's say I want to take out maybe like the, some middle slice of this table. I can always do, I can always take out a different range. Okay? So let's say I want to take MBA.sort. And I want to take out maybe like the middle 10 or like the second group of 10 players from that. So I can A range 10 to 20. And now I get these players who are in like kind of like after the first 10, the 10 after that. Okay, so Lamarcus Aldridge and all of the rest of the players. So A range, you can use to select out, or sorry, take out different rows of the table. And that's how take works. Okay. So there's another method that we use to take out rows from the table, and it's called where. Okay? So take is limited. It's kind of limited in its functionality because you can only take out tables that are that in the numbers that you give it. Okay? So sometimes you want to take out rows that where players have made above $10 million per year, or perhaps you want to look at rows where, where players were only part of a single team. So in this case, we want to use the where method. You can kind of see in the sentences that I was saying before, I want to, I want to take out the rows where players, where players made above $10 million, or rows where players belong to, say, the Brooklyn Nets. Okay, so the where method is what we want to do in that case. And how it works is we pass it a column and a condition that we want to select rows out of. So where the cell. I want to select out rows where the salary is over $10 million. So my column there is my salary. My condition is over $10 million. 
it returns a new table with all the rows satisfying that condition that I talked about. And so I will show you how that works. So let's take, so this is my salary. I want to do NBA.sort by my salary. So here is the NBA player sorted from least to greatest in salary. Let's suppose I want to take the rows where my salary is above 10. And now I have, I have all the players that make above $10 million, as I've discussed before. It looks like I only have maybe like 70 rows in my new table. So it looks like most of my players make under $10 million. The way that the where method works here, the syntax here is the column name goes first. So if you remember from before, the salary variable contains the name of this column. So I can use a salary variable, or I can use column number three. This does the same thing. So salary three. And I use this special method called r.above, and I pass in the argument 10 to say I want to take only the rows that have over $10 million. Any questions about that? OK. So just to remind you, this r thing is a special package within the data science package. So it's like a package exception. Package within a package, um, because it, when I import data science, I get the special R package. I get, also get access to the package's methods. And that's how I can use this R above 10. OK, so that's how I use that. Now, I can also take out, well, let's say I want to take this table and figure out who makes the most money out of people who make above 10, or who makes the least money out of people who make above 10 million. And now I have all the players from least to greatest, but only counting the players that make above $10 million. So using, using where and store and take, I can kind of take different slices out of my table and look at what's in my, look, look what's in my data. OK? So let's take a look at the players on the Golden State Warriors. Congratulations, Warriors, for winning the NBA championship. I can do where team r dot equal to the Golden State Warriors. And I can do that. Okay. So what I've done there is I said, keep only the rows where the team column is Golden State Warriors. If I ever forget what comparisons I can make in this table, what I can do is I can write the same thing, but I can do r dot, and again, I can use tab. So tab is my friend. And now I have the list of all the predicates I can use to select out rows in this table. So for example, if I want to use, I can also use the method containing. And if I use the method containing, what this will do is it'll, it'll match all the strings that have, that contain my substring. So if I type in just warriors here, I get back the same thing because the team column, these, these rows contain the string warriors somewhere within them. So two different ways of doing the same thing. Equal to checks for exact equality. Containing says look for any string that contains my substring. So I have all the players that play for the warriors, Clay Thompson, Draymond Green, et cetera. OK? So let's take a look at how much money these players make. So if I take that and then sort by the salary, you see that Anderson Virgil only makes this much money. And look at Steph Curry. He's like kind of he's kind of in the middle here. He makes above Jason Thompson, but below the person that comes after him. I believe that is Andre Iguodala. So in 2015, 2016, Steph Curry wasn't making a whole lot, um, but now he's gonna make a lot of money because he won the NBA championship. Okay, so I can also do as another example of a predicate, I can do where all the players that make between three to four million dollars are the between three to four million dollars. Here are all the players. Let's take a look at all the players that make around the same amount of money as Steph Curry in 2015. So between 11 and 12 million. It looks like he was kind of in the same group as Andre Iguodala and Nikola Vucevic, I don't know how to pronounce that, but these are the players that Steph Curry was around. And if I want to grab out only 
the row containing Steph Curry, I can do where the player column r dot equal to Stephen Curry. And here's Steph Curry, plays for the Warriors. I can also do r dot containing Curry, and this will show. This will also happen to show me any other player that contains the last name Curry. It looks like Steph, Steph's brother Steph Curry was not playing in the NBA at this time, so he didn't show up. But he was. If he was playing in the NBA, he would show up in this table here as well. Any questions? Yes. Name and question. Uh, so Amanda asks, are the endpoints here inclusive or exclusive? Well, we can take a look. R dot between, question mark, and see if that's helpful. It says greater than or equal to Y and less than Z. So inclusive on the Y, exclusive on the Z. You don't have to remember that. You can always just look it up. There's also, I believe, a between or equal to. And that method, I believe, will do both, both ends inclusive. Yes, Amanda, again? Ah, so is a take method destructive to the original table? Nope. So it creates a new table. Okay. So take and where, actually, any method that we've discussed in this class so far do not change the original table. So if you want to save that result, you have to store it back into a new variable or back into the original NBA table. So I've done a bunch of taking on the NBA table up here. So a bunch of takes, a bunch of sorts. Um, right here is my, let's see where my takes are. Interesting. They've all disappeared. Oh, here they are. So here's a bunch of takes. So I've done a bunch of taking there, but my MBA table is still the same. Okay. So taking where do not change my original table, which is pretty convenient because if I if I were changing the table as I go, I have to be very careful about the order in which I run things. Any other questions? Yeah, Kevin. Yeah, so the between method, the way it works is it says everything greater than or equal to 11, but less than 12. So kind of like how np.a range works, where if I do np.a range, um, like 10 to 20, I get 10 through 19, because 19 is less than 20. Between works including the left endpoint, but not the right endpoint. So from 11 or above to below 12. All right. Well, just to recap what we've done. So we've talked about manipulating rows in this lecture. We've gone over sort, take, and where. And we have there's another way of using table.where, where if you, instead of passing r.something, you just pass in a value. This is, equ this is a shorthand for doing r.equal to value. And it might save you some typing in case you want to know some shortcuts. But otherwise, you can always use r dot whatever to get back what you want. Any questions about any of these methods or what we've done so far? All right. We're pretty good on time. I ended 20 minutes early. Have a good weekend.